Hi everyone, it's Bethany, and in this video I'm going to show you about the Cricut Foil Transfer Kit that was just released by Cricut, and it's really neat. I'm really enjoying it. Mine just arrived yesterday, so I've only had a very short while to really get to know it, but so far it's been really, really fun, and it's very user-friendly because I've only had mine for a little bit, and I've already feel pretty confident with it. So what we're going to do is we are going to look at the foil transfer kit a little bit closer to see what comes in it and then we're also going to make a fun little watercolor project and this is going to be using foil transfer on the watercolor paper so I'm going to do a little project with you with that and I think it's going to be really really pretty so I'm excited to show you a little bit more about how we're going to do that. So before I show you the foil transfer kit, I want to remind you that this is for the Cricut Maker and this is for the Cricut Explore machines only. This does not work on the Cricut Joy. Okay, let's take a closer look at the foil transfer kit and what comes inside. So in the kit, you are going to receive the housing and then you are going to receive three tips. One is for fine, which is the skinniest of the lines that you can create. One is for medium, which has a medium thickness. And then one is for bold, which has the thickest or the boldest line type of all three. The thin, thinnest or the fine tip has one line. There's two lines on the medium and then there's three lines on the bold and they are very, very easy to install. So we are are going to be using the thickest of the three which is the bold tip and how you do it is you'll just press down the top you will insert the tip in and you're going to do it so that the lines stick out and then all you do is just release the top and then it's already in again then you can just push down the top to take it out and you can switch them very easily in the kit, you'll also receive some foil samples. So this is really wonderful. So you're gonna get 12 foil sheets and they are in silver and in gold. And then you're going to receive some tape as well. And this is going to help tape down the foil on the mat so that you can transfer it onto your project. So I also invested in the larger sheets as well. I have the 12 by 12 in gold and I have the 12 by 12 in silver. So these are really nice for larger projects as well. But I'll admit that I accidentally invested in these. I didn't quite mean to buy these. What I did was I was so excited about this foil transfer kit that I quickly added this to my cart. And then I thought that I would need additional materials because I thought that this was just the little housing and the little tips. I didn't realize that they came with their own little foil samples. So I just wanted to let you know that because if you're thinking about investing in this, you can just buy this and do a, some smaller projects and get started with it and get to know this whole system before investing in larger sheets. I was just so excited that I wasn't reading the fine print and ordered some big ones as well because I thought I was going to need these to get started when I didn't really need to. However, I'm really excited that I have these because I think that in the short while that I have been playing around with this, I've really fallen in love with it. So it's nice to have some bigger options for some bigger projects. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is we are going to be applying foil to watercolor paper and we are going to be using the foil transfer sheets. So I have my Cricut Maker. Again, you can use the Cricut Maker or Cricut Explore Air 2, but my Maker is all ready to go today. And what we're going to do is first, I have a little sample of one that I have painted, but I'm gonna show you how I did it with a blank one. So I'm gonna grab my watercolors and we'll get started. Okay, so I just have some watercolors here and excuse how messy they are. I share them with my toddlers. So we all love to watercolor. So I'm just going to grab a little bit of water and I'm going to do a nice green color. So I'm just grabbing a little bit of green and then I'm just gonna start applying some watercolor to my watercolor paper. So I'm just gonna do some nice strokes back and forth and I'm going to be doing um, mine this way but you can do it whichever way you want but you'll see a little bit why I'm doing a design that's going to be going this way in design space so I wanted my strokes to match the direction of my design so I'm just going to go back and forth and get this all nice and painted
Okay, so there we go. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hop into Design Space, but first we are going to do our little question of the day. If you are just visiting, please be sure to subscribe. We're having a lot of fun over here getting chatty in the comments, and we do a little question of the day just to have some fun. So today's question is going to be, do you gravitate towards neutral tones or colorful tones? Well, this is a fun question. Okay, so make sure you guys pop down into the comment section as I'm crafting today and be sure to answer if you tend to gravitate towards neutral tones or colorful tones. Okay, let's hop into design space and let's get designing. Okay, so here we are in Cricut Design Space, and first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over to Shapes, and we are going to recreate the size of our watercolor paper. So I'm going to go ahead and make this white, and then I'm going to unlock it, and I've measured my watercolor paper, and I have a width of 7 inches, and I have a width of five inches. Now I don't want my foil to cover this entire paper because I have a little watercolor in the middle that I want it to cover only. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to come over to shapes. I'm going to create another square and I'm going to make this the nice green color because this will just represent the area that we have watercolored. And I measured that as well and it was just about uh, five and a half inches I believe by four inches so I'm just gonna make I'm gonna do about five and a half by 3.75 that looks just about right okay so now what I'm going to do this is just my template to get us started so that I know where I want to place my foil again this is a white part is my whole watercolor paper and then the green part is where I've applied watercolor so what I want to do is I want to place my foil right in this middle place and I want to center it the best I can so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take both of these pieces I'm gonna come up to a line and I'm going to say center. That's going to make sure that these are centered together. Then what I'm going to do is with both of them selected, you can see over the layers panel that they're both selected, I'm going to come down here and slice them. This is going to allow me to just place my design in the middle of this frame, if you will, and I'll know exactly where I need to put my design to get it centered on my watercolor paper. Okay, so I have that all ready, so I'm just going to set that aside because, again, this is just a template. The next thing I'm going to do is I am going to come up and I'm going to do a text and the text I'm going to use is Kaiden but I want to talk to you a little bit about the fonts that you can use with foil. So if you want to easily find fonts that are really good for foil, what you'll do is you'll go to the fonts, you're going to come over to filter, and you're going to filter for writing fonts. Those are really great um, candidates for doing the foil. So then I'm going to search for Kaiden, K-Y-D-E-N, and I'm going to click that. And then on my first line, I'm going to write hello. Okay, so I'm going to bring that right up here. And then on my second line, I'm going to add another text, and I am going to write Autumn. Okay, so I'm going to bring that right up here. And I'm going to go ahead and make this a lot bigger so that we can see everything a little bit easier on the screen. Okay, so right now you will see when you click on your word that it is the style writing. So what that would do is it would draw out your design with a pen, but what we want to do is we want to use foil. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up to draw and we are going to select the foil. Right now in the line type it's set to draw, but we're going to come down, scroll down to foil, and this is where you can differentiate which tip on your um, foil you want to use. So you can use fine, medium, or bold. I'm personally going to use bold. So I'm going to select that and then it gives you a preview of what that would look like. So it can also show you what color you're using. So I personally am going to be using the gold, but right next to foil, there is another little box here. You can select it and you can scroll through the other colors that are available. So then I'm going to go down here as well to autumn. I'm going to come up to draw and I'm going to go down to foil and select bold. 
Okay, so now I'm just going to select both of these and I'm going to move them over to my little um, template over here. So I want to put those right in the middle. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to work with some images and get some images on here as well in foil. So I'm going to come over to images. It's the fourth button down right on the left, images. I'm going to select that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to all images and I'm going to say browse all images right here. So I'm going to show you how you can easily find really good images for foil. What you're going to do in browse all images is you're going to come over to art type and you can come to draw only. And these are really, really good um, candidates for working with foil because they um, are already set to draw and then you will just select the foil and the type of line thickness that you'd like. You can also select some cut files and then convert them to draw um, and then they would work with foil as well. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to search for leaf and I think what I would like to do is I'm going to use this right here. So I'm going to go ahead and select it and I'm going to insert my images. Okay, so I want to go ahead and make these a little farther apart, but they are all one piece right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this and do some contouring so I can separate them apart. So right now they are um, attached together, as you can see, but I want to be able to move each line line individually. So I'm going to go over to contour and I am just going to contour one side away. So on this first one, I'm just going to take away the left side just like this, and it leaves me with the right side free and independent from the other one. So that will go over here. Then I'm going to move this over here, and I'd like to have it somewhat down in my screen so that when I open up the contour box, I can still see it as I'm working. And then I'm going to, on this one, remove the right side. You can remove over here, or you can click on the actual image to remove. And I like being able to physically, um, or visually, I suppose, see everything being deleted as I work. Okay, so now they are separate from one another. So I'm going to bring them together real quick here. I'm going to select them and I'm going to size them down just a little bit. Okay, that looks good. So now I'm going to bring them over to my frame and that's looking really good. And I'm going to select them both again and size them down just a little bit more. Okay. And then now that they're separated, I can be able to move them around independent of one another, which is perfect. Okay, so again, I'm going to select both vines together. I'm going to come up to a line, and I'm going to say a line bottom. That makes sure that they are together on the bottom. And then I'm going to take my words, hello and autumn, I'm just selecting them both, and I'm going to come up to a line, and I'm going to say center. And those are just centering the words on top of one another. And then what I can do is with my little arrow key on my computer, I can just center those on the design, and that looks good to me. So now what I want to do is right now the vines are set to draw. You can see that over in the layers panel here. Again, oh, we have already set our text to foil, so you can see it says foil bold and foil bold, but our our leaves are still on draw. So again, we're going to come up to line type right up here and we are going to go down to foil and we're going to set it to whatever thickness we want. In this case, we're going to do bold and then I'm going to do the same for the right side. So go over to draw, foil, bold and then we're all set. So now what I want to do is I want to ensure that everything is going to be placed together when it goes to draw it out with the foil. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of my border leaves, so one and two, and then I'm going to select my text, so everything. I'm going to select everything but the border. So all of this is selected. I'm going to come down and I'm going to attach it all together. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I have my maker selected. I'm going to go ahead and select make it. Okay, now to, in order to be able to get everything centered on my mat and make sure that my foil gets placed in the right spot, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to my second mat where it has my little template and I'm going to select on my template. There's three buttons on the top right. I'm going to select that and I'm going to say move object. I want to move that to my other mat for now and I'm going to say confirm. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I am going to place my border here. I'm going to place that at two inches right here 
and two inches right here. That gives me enough room to move my tape around a little bit. So I have two inches, two inches, looks good. And then I'm going to place my design visually right in the center here. So now all we need to remember now is now that we have this centered where we want it, I'm gonna make sure it's perfect. Okay, now that we have this design centered where we want it, the design is gonna stay there, but we don't want our Cricut cutting out a border for us because we already have our watercolor paper already cut out. So all we need to remember now is that our watercolor paper needs to go at two inches and two inches. So we're gonna line up our left-hand corner at two and two. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to take our little template here and we're gonna say hide selected. That way the only thing that's gonna happen is the foil. Now we're gonna say continue. And then I'm going to browse materials and this will show you all of the materials that are compatible with the foil. So there's a variety of things that can work with the foil. And then I'm gonna come down to heavy watercolor paper and I'm gonna select that. Then I'm gonna go ahead and say done. It's gonna give us some reminders. So it's gonna have us load our foil transfer tool. And again, it's gonna remind you which one that is. It has the three lines. It's gonna go in clamp B. Then it's gonna remind us to tape the foil down. And then we can go ahead and load our mat. Okay, so I'm actually gonna use my standard grip mat just because this is a little bit thicker of cardstock. So I just wanna make sure that it sticks down really, really well. So I'm gonna again make sure that my top left corner is at the two inches and two inches little grid point there. And I'm going to lay this down and I'm going to actually grab my brayer tool and make sure it's really, really flat. So using my brayer tool, I'm just going to make sure that it is really, really flat. Now I'm going to go ahead and place my foil transfer sheet on the top of my paper. You want to be careful at this point to make sure that you lay it down on your material and not on your mat because I've made that mistake and accidentally gotten the foil on my mat. And what happens is when you want to go to put take it back off of your mat, it leaves a mark. So I did that a couple times where it got little snags on my mat and it just barely touched it, but it, the foil transfers onto the mat. So you just wanna be careful. And I'm sure that that will come off when I wash it, but I'm not sure yet because I haven't had this very long. Okay, so I'm just gonna make sure that I place this right over where it's going to do the foil and then I'm going to go ahead and grab my tape. So now I'm going to grab the tape and they give you little tape sheets that are included and you can reuse your tape as well. So you just want to tape down all four sides. So I'm just going to tape that down. But as long as this is sticky I would think you could reuse it. So I'm going to tape it down here. I'm going to tape this side. Okay. And then I'm going to tape the final side. So now that my design is all ready to go, I'm going to go ahead and open up my maker and insert my foil tips into the clamp B. So I'm going to go ahead, place this in clamp B, close the clamp, and we're all set to go. So now what I can do is I can go ahead, load my mat by clicking the flashing arrow button. And then the flashing Cricut button will get it started. done I'm gonna go ahead and unload my mat and then we can take a look at what's underneath so this is the most exciting part so I'm going to gently remove the tape from the four corners in a very gentle way in hopes that I can salvage it and keep it and reuse it for another project so I might even be able to remove the tape once the foil is off 
So, here is the final look. And I'm being careful not to rip my watercolor paper. I'm going to go really slow. I think I snagged it a little bit at the top, but the best thing about watercolor and the design that I did is that you won't be able to tell because a little variation in color is exactly what I'm going for. Okay, so then I'm just going to place it to the side and then I'll take this tape off and reuse it for another project. But that's how it looks once it has done um, transferring over. It's really, really neat. Now you can, if you have portions that haven't been used, let's say maybe I used only half of this, you can cut off, I've heard, and reuse the other side. But once it has transferred and made, um, you know, the little indentations in there, you cannot reuse it. So this piece would not be able to be reused unless I wanted to cut off the little sliver on the sides and reuse that that hasn't actually been transferred yet. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and remove my design from my mat and then I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with it. Okay, so I'm just going to bend my mat and I'm placing it upside down and I'm just going to lightly take away my watercolor paper. That way my watercolor paper doesn't bend. So it's all perfect. It removed very well and then I have my final little piece here. Okay, so I have a little frame here that I'm going to put this little design in. I think it's going to look really, really pretty, and especially for fall. And I also wanted to mention that the watercolor paper that I have, I purchased it from Hobby Lobby, and I actually purchased it in a poster board size. So it comes in a very large poster board size, and I then just trim it down and use it for certain projects that I want to use it in the sizes that I need to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn my little piece around. And I'm going to just place this right in here. Now for the question of the day, I might need to trim that piece down just a little bit. Um, for the question of the day, I prefer, well you guys know this, if you guys have been following my channel even for a few minutes, I do prefer the neutral tones. I'm just trimming this bottom because I must have gotten it just a hair too big, which is just fine. I'll just trim that bottom piece. Um, I prefer neutral tones, but I am getting brave and going to try other tones as well, but I definitely, my eye gravitates more towards the neutral tones. I also have the little piece of glass that came with this frame, so I'm just going to put it in the back. I like to do that with my frames, that way I always have all the pieces together in case I want to do something different with the frame down the road. And I'm just going to go ahead and close the little pieces. All right, so this is how it turned out. I really think that that turned out really nice and I'm really happy with the centering of the design on the actual watercolor piece. So that was really helpful in design space for me personally to create that template and it worked really well for me to be able to get things centered visually on the mat so that it could get the foil in the exact spot. All right, everyone, if you think this turned out really, really fun, please let me know. If you are contemplating getting the new foil system, let me know because quite honestly, I've only had it for about 24 hours and I really really think it's very fun. So I hope you enjoyed this. Please be sure to subscribe if you're new here. We have a wonderful stuff coming up. November 1st, we are starting 15 days in a row of crafts you can do for Christmas with your Cricut machine. And I'm really excited to show you those 15 craft ideas. So be sure you're subscribed and I will see you in the next video.